Today we are going to be looking at lures and yes I am filming this in an old box. Welcome to the real world of fishing. So we're going to start off with things like this. This is uh, perks. These sort of things are used on wrecks. They get dropped down into the depths of the ocean. Fish opens its gob, swallows the thing, the lure and you catch fish. Like I said mostly for things like coddling, that kind of stuff on wrecks. There's various ones there, usually heavy lead. Um, I know that I've got some there, yeah, literally just lead bars, there's no colour to them. In fact, one wreck trip many years ago, the skipper was recommending just using lead bars. He reckoned they caught even better than any kind of chrome bars. So that's what we did, and yes, they did work. We had, well, I caught over a hundred pound of fish that day. Cod, ling, conga, there was a tote came up, all sorts of different things, many, many years ago though. I haven't been on a wreck trip for a long time. Wrecks are all a bit far out for me, with my boat. And then you've got ones like that, this is a homemade one, just made out of a stainless bar. Um, you can actually cast this one from the shore, catch a few pollock and things as well. Again, it's a lighter one for more sort of shallower kind of wrecky kind of things. And then this kind of thing, this is what I used up in Scandinavia. This is used for catching things like sea trout, salmon, that sort of thing, bright orange bar. Uh, for whatever reason, they love it, bright orange, so there's a tip for you there. Moving on. We've got things like this. This is for squid. It's a squid jig, basically. You throw this in the water, jig it around, reel it in from casting, and you catch squid on it. Now, the little tip with these is when I used to squid fish a long, long, long time ago, I haven't been for quite a few years, uh, we had these and we tried them out and they didn't work that well. We knew squid was there because we used to fish for rosely, which is smelt, basically, with little hooks. And we used to catch these little hooks and I caught a three and a half pound squid on a rosely hook or a tiny hook that we were using for these smelt and so I thought wow they took that so what I did was after we tried these and they weren't working that well I strapped a smelt onto the side of this with an elastic band just put it on the side elastic band dropped it in and straight away like five pound squid straight onto the hook landed that and after that we just kept strapping these fish that we were originally fishing for onto the side of the jigs and they were just grabbing it every time. Now I know these do obviously work without bait on them but if you're ever having a hard time and, you know, and you're pretty sure there are squid there and you're just dropping it over say the side of a pier or off a boat just tie a bit strap a bit of bait on it can increase your catch rate or it can make a difference at certain times um, but it did work well so there you go a little tip on those. Moving on, we've got things like this. These are just standard sort of spinners, little spinners. These are good. These are great if you're just starting out fishing and that. Um, you'll catch pollock, you'll catch mackerel, long nose. And one other species I caught well on with these, which is surprising enough, is Cooch's Bream. These will catch Cooch's Bream. Now, I've never caught enough of them to know which is their particular colour preference. Um, I've always found the sort of... This one here, in rivers, always worked really well. The um, yellow one, or for perch and stuff. Um, the orange one, I think it was, I was using. Sure. But I'm not certain on that. Um, there's various ones. I don't think it makes too much difference. They all pretty much do the same thing. Just a little spoon spin, or little spinners. Little spoony kind of things. And they work very well. Now, talking of that, there is this type of spoon. Now, I used to use this on a boat. When I was a kid, I had a smaller one of this. Little ones. Just little tiny spoon spinners with a hook on the bottom or a hook down the side. You get various types. And boy, did I catch some fish on it. I used to catch so many fish. I mean, it was only pollock, mackerel, that kind of thing. But when you're a kid, I mean, it was absolutely awesome. It was my favourite lure. It's a little tiny spoon spinner. I used to buy them sort of half the size of this one. This one is sort of something you'd put on a line further up your turbot fishing to draw attention to your mackerel fillet or whatever you're using. You'd put this up the line a few, a few feet and catch like that or it's just an attractor but if you get the small ones and you're a kid you will love fishing with this or you just or if you just generally like, i mean this i went out in the afternoon with these things and i just sat on a rock nice sunny day flicking these out just you know catching small pollock and mackerel and catching those bream fantastic day it was and um yeah occasionally but you've got to use light line because there are pig to cast right moving on to these things 
these are just mackerelers basically they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes these are shrimp rigs these are a bit smaller than normal mackerelers these um, you can catch sand eels on as well so you can go out and catch sand eel before you go fishing and use live sand eel if you want they'll catch herring mackerel pollock will even take these I've had some pretty big pollock as well the line is strong enough to hold the pollock or the hook because um, they are very small these ones so there's those kind of things um, we'll get on to plugs and that in a minute. There's this as well. This is sort of wrecks, a Muppet thing. I don't really use them much. I know they use them on wrecks. Um, I think for cod species and that. But um, I never really had much luck here. We don't really get cod and that here. So, um, But you will catch various things on them. If you just jig them up and down with a hook on. Now I'm going to show you my favourite all-time lure for catching just about anything and everything and there it is it's basically a bit of pipe now I do have a video on this um, which will show you what fish these have caught it also there's more fish it's an old video now um, but I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see more about these lures um, you'll probably need to skip through about half the video because it starts off talking about other lures and things but it will have these in it and it will show you all the different species I've caught on it plus I've caught more since then I've actually caught black bream and several other species on these since then but as far as fishing lures I've caught more fish or various species of fish on these lures than any other lure that I own they just catch absolutely everything they'll catch everything from mackerel, pollock, bass, gurnard, bonito I've had on them um, I've even had squid on these which is more of a fluky thing I think than anything but um, yeah so these things if you want to just go out and generally catch anything or stand the chance of not missing out on certain fish that pass go for these they have taken bass to I think the biggest on these is uh, about eight and a half pound I think it was the biggest one on this so far I mean you never know there could be some bigger ones but they do they did catch bass fairly regularly and pollock so again just a bit of pipe slow cut there cut off there put it on a line like a macro line set up single hook sticking out the bottom there and just work them like a macro line or like a pod or collet line a cod line and you will catch just don't put too many hooks on because when you go through a shoal you pretty much will fill up on fish with these right moving on soft plastic kind of lures these sort of things now, these things are pretty straightforward. They're like a soft sand deal. Uh, you stick them on your line, you cast them out, you reel in or you jig them and they catch fish. And that's all there is to it. I mean, the only difference thing is you'd probably vary the speed of these. Um, slow, fast, you know, jig them a little bit or jutter them a little bit in the water. All depends on the day, the way the fish are feeding, what they're feeding on and uh, how to entice the fish to take them. But quite often you can just cast them out, reel them in slowly and fish will hit them. Now the thing with these is they come in obviously you've got this sort of which is a normal sort of size which most people use. If you want to catch big fish get one like that. Don't mess around with that. Now obviously when you go fishing you might fish with that and say well it doesn't seem to catch that well. That's because there's a lot less bigger fish than there are smaller fish. And this is going to catch like your small pound fish, two pound fish. But if you want to seriously catch some seriously decent sized bass stick a big lure on. That's always been my motto with catching bass. Is if you want to catch a big bass, you've got to use a big bait. Um, there is a thing I read about a long, long time ago where apparently bass will not expel more energy than what they get back from their bait. Don't ask me how they know this. It's probably evolution. It's probably the fact that all those that did expel too much energy died out. And only the ones that learnt that still live on. I mean, obviously, if this comes past the nose of a bass and he's got to do a snap at it, he will. But if he's got to make an effort to get to that, and it's a really big bass, um, he's not going to probably get as much energy back from eating that as he's actually done from the, the initial attack. But that, he probably would go for. So, But anyway, like I say, I've always found bigger baits for the bigger bass. You will catch big ones on small baits as well, this is true, but if you're trying to generally go for big stuff, then use a bigger bait. Um, you get all sorts of different ones, you know, you've got ones like that, and you've got white ones out. I would, personally, if I'm going for bass, something like that, I'd go with whites, blues, greens, anything sort of sandy or what looks like the bait. Um, you can use all the different bright colours you like, but um, I've never done that well with many bright colours on things, not in our waters anyway. These sort of things that are short, looks pretty cool, but 
it doesn't really catch and I, I found that with anything that's like a shorter stumpier lure doesn't seem to work well for, sh uh, for sea fishing not around our area anyway um, they work perfectly fine in rivers and lakes and that but not in the ocean and finally on to plugs so plugs you've got plugs like this which are double jointed you've got ones that have no joints you've got ones that have a lot more joints like this now these I use obviously a lot for predatory fish like bass, pollock, you know the, the sort of fast moving tuna, bonito, that sort of thing um, they'll take all these sort of things and they take them well now ones with a lot more joints I've never done that well with for whatever reason the more joints they have the less fish I seem to catch uh, that's not strictly true when it comes to a single joint a single joint to me works just as well as a solid one but it's just when you start getting into like three four five six seven eight joints I don't know I just don't seem to do that well uh, they might do well in your area but they don't do well for me now with these sort of lures one thing you've got to watch you'll see that they've got the wires oh, there's a good one that shows an example you'll see this is a three hook I took off one hook I tend to do that I don't like the three hooks I'd rather just use two hooks if I can so all I do is I take the centre hook out up the size of this hook either side and they work just as well in fact sometimes it's actually improved the lure now these wires uh, the best ones you can get are going to be a through wire it goes from the, the very nose of the fish right back to the tail it's one wire inside the body and this way it's not going to break or pull out more modern lures are starting to use like a, a lure which is in here uh, the wire which goes in here is like more of a T on top here it's sort of one bent this way one bent that way they do hold fine if the lure is decent enough and the wire isn't too thin they will hold perfectly fine the ones you've got to watch out for are the ones that are literally just pushed in there and glued they'll have like a little kink in them and they just glue them in they might be fine for a few fishing trips they'll be fine on smaller fish but when you get that legendary fish grabs hold of your line one day or your hook that's the time it'll pull out and until then you won't know so avoid that and like I say avoid thin wires because they why thin wires can get twisted they may not when you hook the fish but when you grab the fish you might grab the lure and then that's when the, the wire will just suddenly twist off so things to watch out for now your lure it swims through the water obviously straight that's the plan anyway so you, what I always do is lures chuck it in the water first just test it out in front of you so you can see it just pull it through the water if you see your lure doing that then you need to bend this front wire left or right depending which way it's bending or which way it's turning because obviously it'll either go that way or that way another way if you still find it's a bit unstable you can up the size of the hooks that'll stabilize it a little bit putting it, it won't be a great difference but it will help bibs on the front now you get metal ones you get plastic ones um, I have noticed a difference over the years of fishing metal ones I don't tend to find work that well in bright sunny conditions not for bass anyway um, if it's too bright and sunny I'd switch to plastic these days or I've got ones that the metal's been painted now the metal ones actually work better if you've got dull days or if your water is clarity is a bit rubbish if it's very planktony maybe murky that little bit of sparkle can help but then you're probably using a lure anyway that's a bit brighter I tend to do that put a sparkly lure on on dull or murky water conditions or simply ones like this ones that have uh, bearings in them that rattle as they go through the water now a question that always are people ask what's your favorite lures and what's your favorite colors well colors again it's going to depend where you fish and that but if you're fishing for bass like I do with these quite often or sea bass I always stick with either green blue white or opaque and silver colors obviously so sort of silvery colors any of those colors and you're pretty much set to catch fish if you start picking up colors I mean that this color can work sometimes it's yellow but if you're going for bright oranges all that kind of thing I've never done that well with them. In fact, if I've got lures, I have made mistake orders. I did one last year, I ordered a lure and it came yellow, my mistake. And I tried it and I caught nothing on it. Anyway, a month or two later, I sprayed it. And I sprayed it white and blue. And it literally started catching non-stop after that. 
so yeah it did make a difference so um, yeah blues greens whites opaques silvers that kind of thing if you're bassing if you want to be certain you can try all the lures I mean there might be somebody out there who's got a bright orange lure who catches bass every time he casts but um, in my experience those are the sort of colours you want to go for and again with these you've got depth as well some go deep some go shallow but that's more of a that's more of a um, where you're fishing so you're not hooking the bottom or if you're fishing really deep that kind of thing now when fishing with these sort of things and spinners that kind of thing I always put a swivel on the front like that clip swivel this is just an American snap I've got various different types you just pick which swivel you prefer which clip swivel is your favorite now the idea with the swivel is is to get rid of any spin in the line if you get one of these on a boat say and you're trailing it and it snags up on your line or a fish hits it and then you've got to bring it in and it's it came off and it snagged your line up on the hook it's going to do this all the way in and i tell you now that will put so much spin in your line and you'll have serious problems with that where your line keeps knotting up and stuff so you want to get a spinner on there plus possibly the fish is twisting this you want it really to be on a spinner as well Pollock are quite bad for that. When you hook Pollock, they tend to just flop around all the way to the boat. So you want a spinner to stop that spin. Now, another reason for having this on is obviously so you can change the lure over quickly. You can put any other lure on very quickly and to retie each time. And if you're fishing from the shore, these things will save you a lot of trouble when you're casting with fixed spools. Um, Every time you, you reel in, your fixed spool puts line twist. And this will get rid of a lot of that line twist. Um, if you don't use it and you just use a clip, over time what you'll notice is that when you cast, all of a sudden your line will explode out of your reel. It could explode above the lure, it could explode 20 feet, 100 feet up the line, however far you're casting. It could just suddenly go anywhere where, the, where all the loops suddenly come together and you end up with a right mess. Now I had a friend, he said, who uses braid. And he said to me, oh, he doesn't bother because he uses braid. Three casts later, his line completely exploded. And if you've ever had a bird, a bad bird's nest in braid, you'll just you'll know it's an absolute nightmare to try and get it undone. It's actually a lot worse than trying to undo catgut. But even then, the thing is with catgut, you can kink it. But obviously a knot in string is going to be a lot worse to undo. So anyway, he spent the next hour trying to do that and not actually fishing, trying to get his line undone because obviously braid is expensive and he didn't want to have to cut it all off halfway up his line so put a clip swivel on if you want to avoid that um, you can use a swivel a bit further off if you like but I prefer not to because by putting it there you're putting all the weight in one spot for your cast up here you can get a little bit of a sort of jackknifing effect which can sort of affect your casting a little bit but it's entirely up to you now obviously I've showed you that we've got jointed lures. We've got ones like this as well. You'll see ones like this. This is a very old one. This is actually caught quite well for what it is. Um, but this this one's brilliant, really, because it's got that. And oh, I wish they'd all do that. It's a little... On the front, you can adjust it. So you can go there, there, or right down, and it'll adjust how deep this dives. So if you're fishing really shallow on the shore, you can cast it like that. And then if you want to get a bit deeper, because, you know, the weed or the tides come in, you can just do that and it will pull this lure down a bit deeper you know I mean I like I like lures to sort of get down a little bit I don't I'm, I'm not a fan of surface lures I never have been um, like poppers and things I've never done that well on them some people <coughs> in some places do really well on them um, here I've tried them and actually a friend of mine years ago reckoned they were great and he was saying how good they were and all the rest of it and I, I just couldn't understand it I said well I've never caught anything on them they just don't seem to work for me I had three or four so they don't work for me and uh, anyway I spoke to him a few years back now and I said to him I said I never understood I said these, these poppers they, I, I still never caught anything on them and he said um, and I said I said you, you did all right there he said he said no actually I didn't catch anything on them I just said I caught one <laughs> so he actually lied to me but um, no some some people will catch on them of course you know I've seen these things co literally come out of the water and bass lunge at them so they do work but just not my thing. And then there's other things like this one here. This is a strange one. Look how long this is. I bought this because I thought this is looking unusual. Looks like a big sand deal maybe. I've only cast it a few times and I haven't caught it yet. But I might cast it at the time when there wasn't much around anyway. So I'm yet to try it a little bit more. 
I don't like three hooks, but on a lure this long, there's not much you can do about that. Um, well, you could take the hook off, I suppose, and just go with one hook. Or, but I do know a lot of fish, a lot of bass, especially from the boat when you're casting, will come up and smash into the centre hook. The shore, quite often, they'll hit the, obviously the back because you're in shallow water, but when they come up from deep water, if your lure's near the surface, they'll hit right in the body area. And they usually get hooked on that hook there. That hook there normally ends up hanging around where the gill raker is. Oh, they got that. And you've got in between ones as well, which are a bit like this, which is sort of half and half. Um, I've never really used it because it's just too light for my kind of fishing to cast, but uh, if you had a light set up off the shore, it probably would catch. Um, like I say, there are variants and all of these kind of things. If you're really stuck for fishing one day out the boat for mackerel and stuff, you can use something like this. This is just beads. You can actually just stick a couple of coloured beads above your hook and stick on two or three hooks and you'll catch mackerel quite easily. I've used this many a time when I haven't had any lures on me. Stuck a couple of beads on, get straight into some fish. And like I said with the plastic lures, if you want to get serious about catching a big bass, you get serious with what lures you use. Um, I would use this from the boat. I have used this from the boat many times and it's caught plenty of fish. In fact the last fish it caught I believe was about eight pound was the last one this had. But this has taken them up to around 12 pounds I think I've had on this particular lure. Um, from the shore I might tone it down just a little bit but I'd, I'd go with something like a 14 centimetre lure or 16 centimetre plug. Um, like this sort of thing. I mean, I quite often I use like 10, 11 centimetre lures from the shore. But things like that, it's not quite as big as that. In fact, I'd even go a size up. But like I say, if you're after big bass, you want to use big baits. You know, don't mess around with little tiny plastic lures. Get something big on that hook. Now, you might not catch as much, but when you finally get one, it'll be an absolute stonker. And if you want to get adventurous, and you've got time on your hands, you can make your own lures. There's, there's one, there's another, these are the only two I've got left. These are like the first ones I ever made. Um, they're made of birch, and they uh, they're just hand painted literally from uh, some acrylic paints I had. And then they're just given us uh, a coat of varnish, or lacquer, whatever, just to give a nice uh, paint sort of paint getting damaged on them and they have caught they used to catch really well actually in the rivers and lakes they caught well um ocean these aren't really the sort of style for the ocean to be honest but they're pretty straightforward you just get yourself a bit of birch you carve that these are all carved by hand and this one actually caught really well i put a little sort of curve in its back and for some reason this one used to do so well with the pike i've caught so many pike on this one. Um, I think I actually had to go over the paint job because it was <laughs> the teeth were just damaging the lure so much. So anyway, you, you carve it up and then what you do is you cut the lure in half and then you can put a through wire through it. All this stainless wire that goes through it, I don't know if you can see because it's quite small, which is there, there and obviously the tail. That's the through wire that goes through the body and you cut it in half, you carve out a little grooving area for your wire to sit and obviously you cut out the area you want to get. You can do it with uh, saws, chisels, dremels, whatever. And then you glue it back together. Now, you want to use an epoxy resin if you're going to glue these things. You can use wood glues if your lure is completely coated, but I would use like an epoxy, um, obviously for waterproof reasons, because they are made of wood and they will suck up water. Um, this one's actually quite heavy. I've actually got lead in this because it sinks this one. And it's also got a stainless steel bib. I mean, that was a bit overkill. But you can just, you can literally just find yourself a plastic tub, so anything that doesn't get brittle and cut out a bib like that, and that works well enough. If you ever have problems with your lures, um, not swimming properly, just slow your retrieve down. Um, obviously if it twists around, it's a really bad lure, but generally just um, retrieve them a bit slower if your lures aren't quite so stable or up the size of the hooks a bit. But then you can catch things like this, and I'll tell you, there's nothing finer than making your own plug or lure like this, going out and testing. I used to do all sorts of styles. Now I had a whole box that I made, um, unfortunately, I lent it to some, I lent my lures to somebody one day, and I never saw them again. So don't lend your lures to people. 
Um, and these are the only two, two survivors, but I had all sorts of different styles. I had like shads and all sorts that I made up, different colours. And they used to work, like I say, really well. Some were just didn't work at all. I had one or two which were rubbish. But in general, once you've got the feel of which ones are working, how to make them, uh, nothing finer than making your own lures. And we should be doing one, actually. I'm in the process of setting up. It's going to take a bit of while what I'm doing. And we're going to make one for the ocean. And we're going to go out and test it out and see how many fish we can catch with it. And not to see if it will catch, because I know it's going to catch but what it catches, how big they are, and how many. But that'll be for another video. Okay, so that was a video on lures. Now, several people have asked me um, if I could make a video on the lures I use, and different lures that I have, this kind of thing. Well, that hopefully answers some of the questions, because I do get a lot of questions on lures, like colours, where to use them, um, what's the best lure, this kind of thing and uh, hopefully that addresses a lot. Now if it doesn't, there is actually a Facebook page it's called Saltwater Lure Fishing and if you go onto Facebook go into the top search bar and type in Saltwater Lure Fishing hyphen home it'll be the first one that comes up on the list and I will also in the bottom here in the description I will put a link to that site as well so if you've got any more questions like I say regarding lures you will find a lot of people there who go lure fishing. It's, like I say, it's all about lure fishing. It's about lures, rods, reels, um, the kind of fish they're catching at the time, whereabouts to fish, any questions you've got on it and you need help with, there's plenty of people there that will help you. Um, there's some YouTubers there as well. Um, I'm there from time to time as well. So you can get all the help you need there. And then, finally, the one question that people always ask me, what's my best lure? I mean, they say, what's my favourite lure? It's not my favourite, but it's my best lure, as in it's caught more fish than any other lure, or it's been more reliable than any other lure, and it's caught some pretty big ones too. And it is that one there. And I have showed this before, once before, in an old video, but it was an old video. Now, I don't know how clearly you can see that, but I'll tell you what it is. It's a... Rapala Magnum, it's the old one, so this isn't the modern one, it's 11 centimeters. I do use the 14 centimeters, or did use them, can't get them anymore. Um, they do make, still make them, but they're making them in plastic now. This is the old wood one, you can actually see maybe there at the back, maybe, maybe not, but it's actually coming through, it's actually going rotten, so it's not, you know, it's got a through wire, so it should be still capable. I did take it out about a year ago, and I was catching absolutely nothing doodling around as you do when you get a bit bored and I thought hang on a minute let me let me crack open the old the old magnum there and see if she'll, she'll work well I threw it out threw it in the water four pound bass I didn't catch any more but it caught four pound bass after all those years and I thought yeah you've still got it so that is my favorite or my best should I say but and there's always a but there is another one the thing is with another one is I am still testing it. Now, you know when you get those times you go fishing, particularly bass fishing, and there are bass everywhere. You know they're there. You can see them on the surface, in the water, around you. And you put on your great lure like this one, and it doesn't catch. So then what you do is you put on your other great lures. They don't catch. So then you end up going for your whole box, hoping that one of your lures you've got, out of however many lures you've got, will catch those fish and the fish just don't want to know yeah well I've come across that problem several times and last year I, I ran into that problem and I spent a couple of days fishing same problem then I pulled out this one lure I had and I threw it into the ocean and it was catching and it was catching non-stop but that that's for another video